And now, join us for live streaming from Tel Aviv, Yafo. Second panel of the Israel Drama Festival, the exposure of Israeli theatre. Um, I hope you've got your coffees and I hope you brought your digital selves with you today in this gender blender. Um, you're going to meet today a bunch of amazing women and men, um, but the women who are not necessarily talking about gender, whereas the men are, because something is happening. You know, in 1977, Helene Sixou wrote, how as women can we go to the theatre without lending our complicity to the sadism directed against women? or being asked to assume the position of victims. She's always the father's daughter, his sacrificial object, guardian of the phallus, upholding the narcissistic fantasies which helps the father to ward off the threat of castration. Like Electra and Antigona, she is eliminated. Or like Ophelia, she is three times condemned to be buried alive by three jealous father figures. And if, the, and if like Cordelia, she finds the strength to assert a femininity which refuses to be the mirror of her father's raving, well then, she'll just have to die, won't she? For in every man there is a dethroned King Lear, writes Helen Sixou, who requires his daughter to idealize him by her loving words and build him up, however, however low he may have fallen, into the man he wishes to appear. Tell me that I'm the greatest, the meest, the most like a king, or I'll kill you. Helen Sixor didn't want to go to the theatre because she said she felt like she was going to her own funeral. And we are, maybe thanks to her and other women like her, here today with women who just want to speak about their projects, their plays, their writings, their directings, whereas men are dealing with gender. So we'll begin with an excerpt from Voices by Hisham Suleiman. Please. Well, I would like to say hello to, and good evening, to Hisham Suleiman, who is not physically here because he's filming now another TV series or another movie. You may recognize him from Fauda. Hisham, are you here? Yes, I'm here. How are you? Good night. Okay, good evening. I, I can't good see evening. you, but you know, this, yes. is, this is what we have to be ready for all these. Oh, now I can. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so you are a writer and director and an actor, um, maybe most famous for many of the TV shows and films that you've 
taken part in, but what people don't know is that you've directed over 50 theatre performances. Yes, yes. And I'm also an artist manager to uh, the, the French Theatre. The free, yes. Right, the artistic director, right? And um, what brings you to deal with this kind of material? Uh, first of all, I think um, this, this subject is very, very important in our uh, uh, Arab sector. And uh, you know. Maybe I will say for those who didn't realize that uh, the, the show is in Arabic, not in Hebrew. I know that yes. to some people that it all sounds the same. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, as you know, it's, uh, it's, this is not only our problem in the Arab sector, Arab people, it's uh, uh, this problem all, uh, all the world. Yes, it's uh, a global problem. Yes, yes. But what brings uh, you to deal with it? What, what brings yes. you, what brought you to deal with it? I understand that this is not your first show dealing with um, violence against women. Yes, for sure. It starts from, from my wife. She is a psychodramatist and also okay. a director. And she works a lot with women. And uh, when, uh, when, uh, when I hear a lot, a lot of uh, uh, stories about uh, women, uh, so uh, as, uh, as I, 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 I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a man, so I didn't know, I hear about these stories from the you know, TV, from the news, I didn't know exactly how it's worked, and when uh, when I met these uh, subjects from my wife, I said I must do something uh, as an as an artist. So I decided we must um, 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 uh, perform something, and um, you know when you when you use the artist and you you have uh, um, something to say, so it's it's maybe it's very very strong. Uh, uh, than the news or the TV, so use the art. Yes, um, I think that I, I, I... Okay. Yeah, and I want to say another thing, and I said we must, uh, you know, uh, uh, when we use, when, when we um, uh, uh, take this subject, very, very strong subject, we must uh, talking about the taboos. Uh, nobody talk about uh, these taboos, so we must talk about these taboos and our um, uh, 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 people. I think that there is, there is a lot of strength in the fact that you as a man are bringing up these taboos. As a man and a creator and an artistic director, you're bringing up these taboos. And it's not necessarily a woman speaking about women because it defines from the beginning also what, what men think of this situation. Um, I think, uh, first of all, I'm a human being, so I, <laughs> I think uh, uh, it's okay, you know, Lorca, uh, Federico Gracia Lorca, he uh, also take uh, or wrote a lot of uh, things about the uh, women. Yes. Um, and, um, and I think, uh, uh, because when I, when I was a children, when I was a young one, Young, uh, uh, when, when, when I was young, um, I saw a lot of things. I didn't, uh, 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 I can't speak about what I think. Uh, from my point, it's a uh, it's problem. Um, uh, it's like, you know, tarbut, the arachim. Culture and values. The culture and values that we, that we grow up in. So actually... So I, I, I didn't have a voice. Yes. Uh, I, I didn't have a voice or uh, to, to scream and to say, wait a minute, what's, what, what's going on here? Uh, and now I am, I am strong, I'm an artist, so I can give my voice and uh, say something that uh, I can't uh, say, 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 say it uh, before. And I, I, understand, I understand that most of the text in this show, Voices, is actually documentary, is real text. That you took that you took actually from uh, from uh, women and from stories and you assembled yes. them together. Yes. First of all, I work with the uh, women, the <coughs> actors. Uh, uh, one of the actresses so, is your wife. Yes. 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 For sure. Uh, and uh, they give a lot of things from uh, their uh, uh, their life, what what they feel, 
as a woman. So, uh, um, uh, and then we, we met a lot of women who, Nashim uh, Mukot. Uh, B battered uh, wives. Yes, uh, and uh, Miklatim. Uh, Shelters. Yasi. Yes. Therapists. And, uh, yeah, and um, uh, as a director, you know, we took all this chaos <laughs> and we start to improvise, improvise. And um, I decided not to to go to the uh, uh, the mainstream theater and to make a, a realism a, a performance. Uh, I think uh, our choose to take this uh, um, this material, yes, and to make this something, material, yes, yes, give, to make it in different way. Yeah, to give it, give it a voice and also movement and also singing and dancing, yes. and the, I, I think that actually there are very many places in this in this show where where the the dissonance, the tension between what they are saying and what yes. is happening on stage is a very big part. I have one more yes. question for you. You know, I have students, Arab students and Jewish students, um, and I showed them some pieces of your wonderful play, and mm -hmm. I, I, I stopped before the end. Um, we knew that there was a promise for bloodshed from the very beginning of the show, uh, mm -hmm. and I said to them, but what do you think is going to happen now? And they were, they were guessing, you know, um, maybe her husband will kill her, um, someone said, maybe she will kill her husband, and then some of the students laughed. And then only one woman said that uh, she thinks actually it won't be her husband who will kill her, it will be her, the society. As you were saying before, the values of society and the culture, yes. that, uh, and, and it is in the end not her husband. Um, yeah. I'm not making any spoilers for you, you're going to have to watch the show. Um, yes. But uh, I asked what would happen if really there would be a happy end. How would, how would the audience leave? And one of the students said, it depends if you're a man or a woman. I said, what if it would really be this fantasy ending that the woman yeah. is, is killing the, the people who are oppressing her? What would happen? And, 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 I, and when she said men or women, she said, the men will be very, very scared and, uh, and the women will be very, very happy, or maybe they will also be scared, she added. What do you think? Mm -hmm. what, is, what is happening now to women and women's status? How is, it, how, how is it influencing men? Not only you as an artist, but men in society, men who, who are going by the culture and values that they grew up in. Yes, I think I, I want to share with some words I hear from um, the father of uh, once, once of the women, once of the women uh, who have been killed. Uh, after his husband uh, killed her, he said, I kill my daughter. I kill her. Uh, because uh, I, I, uh, I believe that uh, she will uh, be okay. That means I, I didn't, he didn't help her uh, uh, daughter. Yes. And this world, and this world I, I think uh, for me, uh, it was uh, inspiration. Yes. Inspiration. Yes. Uh, and I think uh, 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 the audience, is specific, uh, the men, when they uh, see the, the performance, and uh, 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 there is no, no too much women. Men came and see the performance. <laughs> mostly women come. Yeah, mostly women. But I hear from the, 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 the men who see the performance, that um, this is very very important for him for him because because he think he also uh, kurban uh, a victim a victim uh, a victim of yeah. society yes yes he he is he is also a victim and I think the most most important for me uh, I will see this word in Hebrew la uh, makkah yes in order to to be a uh, um, uh, <laughs> To be there before, yes. to be to be a, a, to give a warning before it happens, to be like a, yes. A, yes. a warning sign. Yeah, and and from my opening opening, I believe theater is not come to say what's wrong, what's yes, what no. 
I really thank you very, very much for this talk. I know that you are in very stressful days, um, but thank you, thank you very much. And I recommend you all to see this show, Voices. It's very, very powerful. It was powerful for me as well. Um, so thank, thank you. you. Shukran. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and we're going from Arab culture or part of Arab culture and global culture to something very, very Jewish. Um, Jewish sages often compared women to demons and uh, they would warn their, their men to be beware of their daughters, that they don't become whores and they don't become witches. Uh, Bishevi Singer, um, he actually dealt a lot with these themes in a very clever way and We'll see an excerpt and then meet two very interesting artists. Taibele and her demon. אפשר להציע לך משהו שירכך את הבדידות? מה למשל? ספר טוב, טרוף על הלב. מעשיות מהצד האפל? מה זה שדים? מה הם שדים? בדיוק כמו בני אדם. רק קצת פחות מנומסים. <laughs> אני אגב מכיר בני אדם שהם הרבה יותר גרועים משדים. <laughs> מה את אומרת? לא תצטערי. is an award-winning theater and a TV creator. Um, for the past 20 years, you've been writing and directing, and I remember you also as a very, very good actress. Thank you. <laughs> you directed this show, uh, yes. Taibele and Her Demon, and your husband, Roni Sinai, wrote the, wrote the play. Yes. Um, so maybe tell us a bit of the background of this play and... Okay, um, Table and Her Demon, um, a story by Bashevi Zinger. A beautiful story, but very, very short. Uh, in order to make a show out of it, we plunged into the world of Bashevi Zinger, read hundreds of stories, and actually we took um, some more stories and combined from them a mixture uh, of Bashevi's world around this character of Tebele, who is a, um, a woman in a small Jewish village uh, who was deserted by her husband just after the wedding. Yes, this there, this there, is, a, there is actually a term. a term in Hebrew called aguna, because the ceremony, until today, the ceremony of the wedding is actually the man buying his wife. Um, then to get divorced is, is a bit of a problem for a woman. I mean, 
if I buy a cup, oh no, we, mu we mustn't buy these uh, paper cups anymore. <laughs> um, but if I did buy this cup, this cup cannot disown me, I can disown it. So, um, so she's left and she's left she's by abandoned. Jewish law till today, as you say. She's forbidden. She's forbidden. And she's actually um, banned to a life of doomed to a life of loneliness, a life without love, without passion, without being able to be uh, a mother, without knowing anything um, about men. She's alone. And so she's in kind of a jail, a, a emotional jail that she tries desperately to get out of and by chance <laughs> uh, she meets this um, strange book um, seller in the market and he gives her a book about demons and then he, she opens the books and enters a world of I, uh, mysterious dark uh, fantasy. things that she, fantasy that she was not aware of this is this is really uh, kind of your signature this physical theater that combines magic and fantasy and uh, and humor this a is lot of I, humor yeah this is what i love doing um <laughs> i love fantasy i love legends uh, i love um, stylized uh, theater so in this work the combination between humans and demons for me it was you know such a, a beautiful ground to play in and um what i did is i took this little village religious village and I put some demons inside and the demons are musicians in the village and they also play all kinds of characters uh, and of course the story is about it's a love story between um, a, demon. A, a, demon, a demon a demon a demon a man in, in guy in disguise that falls in love with this girl and but he cannot have her he cannot get near her because she's forbidden so he disguises himself into a demon convinces her that she cannot see him because if she will see him, she will burn in hell. And then they form this strange love story between a, a woman and a demon. And, um, and, and it's, for me, it was, we, we did the stage like a, a theater inside the theater. Yes. It's like a stage on the stage, mm -hmm. actually, because it is a lot about theater. This guy is playing for her. He, he's... Uh, playing he's playing character. a role. He's yes. playing a role and he's creating a magical world for her. And she's so mesmerized by it, drawn to it, that uh, she falls in love with this world. And like I fell in love with theater. So, so for me, this was the connection for me to the work. And the, uh, this, uh, the character, Taibele, she has a friend. Yes. A best friend who also suffers from one of the Jewish laws. Yes, she's, <laughs> she's considered um, a, fatal. Ter terminator. <laughs> a fatal. A fatal, fatal woman. Fatal uh, wife. <laughs> because uh, two of her husbands died. In mysterious ways. One was choked, choked by a, a fish. Anyway, she's, she, the, everybody in the village believes that she kills men. And so nobody gets near her and the uh, matchmakers run away from her and she's alone and she's also desperate for love. So these two women uh, are isolated in the society and she, she believes in ghosts and demons. And she convinces Taibale that there, is, there are demons now that are possessing this uh, yeah, village. And, and, and putting an evil one, eye on there's them. There's an evil eye and there's a curse. And this is why they cannot marry, because they are haunted now. Do you uh, believe in, in, uh, in demons? Uh, <laughs> there was a very nice story. When, when we started working, uh, on the, Ronnie started adapting this uh, story. So I, at night, I used to hear in the, uh, in, in the um, bedroom a sound like... <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> and it appeared when we started working on the play. Every night I would go to sleep around midnight or something. <laughs> so Ronnie called it Stop immediately. Stop writing. Stop Ronnie, it. Ronnie called it immediately Igor. He was <laughs> our demon. We didn't know it was until I found out that there was a worm inside ah. the wood. Oh my of goodness, the a door. worm. <laughs> And I tried to kill it, so I put all kinds of glue Terrible. and stuff and, and, and all kinds of things that told me nothing killed the worm. It was there <laughs> every night. The show went on, and there was the coronavirus. Yes. And the coronavirus actually stopped us 
How when long? We so, how long actually were you working on this we're play with, with all the corona? A few months, and then coronavirus came, and we, the theater stopped working when we were doing uh, the final rehearsals. So the show didn't actually; it was not born. Yes, we all had this. So this, this is the second curse of yes. the demons, and we were all convinced that because we were dealing with the devil and the demons, then this is why Corona came. It was <laughs> because of us. We are. We you know, I heard <laughs> that there were two termites in the West End, also gnawing at the at the at the scenery of one play, and one says to the other, uh, "How how's your scenery?" He said, "Ah, the book was better." <laughs> so, <laughs> apropos um, a love story and adaptations, I would like also to introduce now into the, into the conversation Noga Ashkenazi, um, who wrote an adaptation for Dorit Rabinian's novel, uh, All the Rivers. And we'll see an excerpt and then we'll talk. I will just say that Noga Ashkenazi is a dramaturg and a filmmaker and a writer for screen and for theater and also had a, a job at the Paramount Productions, a leading job in the development. Um, so very pleased to have you with us. Thank you. You were born in Israel? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And your parents? My parents are from Iran. Iran. They they immigrated from Tehran in the 60s. Sit down, please. So, both your parents are Iranian. Iranian Jews, yes. Mm -hmm. And you, yourself, have you visited Iran recently? Never. Are you sure? Maybe you visited relatives. <laughs> As you know, Iran is not a recommended place to visit for Israelis. Mm, but according to what I see here, you've had quite a few visits to Egypt in the past to several Egypt? years. Oh yes, to Sinai, to Sinai. We used to go there a lot when I was a kid, but we don't go there anymore. It became dangerous. Is this your laptop? Yes, but... May I? E excuse me. Ma'am. Ma'am, do you use your computer outside of this apartment in public places? I, I don't understand why he needs... were you at Aquarium Cafe on the corner of 9th and 6th Avenue the day before yesterday? Cafe Aquarium? Tuesday evening. Yes, yes, I was there. New York State Police received a complaint from a man who saw you at Aquarium Cafe. What man? A man who reported a Middle Eastern-looking female involved in suspicious activity. This man claimed he saw you writing emails in Arabic. But I don't speak Arabic. So what is this? This is Hebrew. This is not Arabic. Hebrew? Uh, Hebrew. Lechaim. What? Shalom. Oh, oh. <clears throat> Can you read this? Read what? This email right here from Noam Darol. Yeah, who is uh, Noam to you? He's my boyfriend, my ex-boyfriend. Okay. Yes, please. In Hebrew? Yes, please. But it's in Hebrew. Out loud, please. Can I read a different email, please? No. No, read this one. I mean, I think the, the question I asked myself, and I think the book asks itself, is um, can love conquer all, all obstacles? Uh, in a way, this play asks, um, asks the, the lead characters to, to decide if they can overcome obstacles like language, uh, culture, religion, politics, geography, and uh, whether love is enough to overcome all those differences. Um, what we get, though, in the play is that maybe when we're outside the Middle East, when we're outside our little puddle, then it's possible because we're, we're, we're not, in, we're not in, the, in the eye of the conflict. But once we, we come back 
right. then everything becomes impossible again. Yes, while in New York, they're sort of uh, um, surrounded in this bubble of uh, you know, an international environment where a love story like this between an Israeli Jew and a Palestinian Muslim uh, can exist, but it can only exist in New York. Once, once Liat moves back to Israel and Hilmi uh, moves back to the West Bank, to Ramallah, things become a lot more complicated and they literally physically can't see each other because of this fence separating them. Yes, I, actually it's, it's interesting when, uh, speaking of translations and yeah. adaptions in Hebrew, the name of the, of the book is Gader Chaya, which is like a... Hedgerow, it's, it's a like hedge a, li a live fence, living if, if, fence if, if, yeah. a living fence, right, a living right. wall, a living uh, place of, of secluding. Right. One. Referring to the separation wall that Israel built between uh, Israeli territory, what's defined Israeli territory, and the uh, West Bank in 2002. This huge gray concrete wall was built um, to prevent uh, acts of terrorism and to create a physical separation between Israel and Palestine. And so um, the book deals with the fences within us. Yes, uh, and the demons. Yeah. And the demons within us, absolutely. It's not, it's, not, um, it's not just the physical, the geographical separation, but really, you know, we come with prejudice, we come with a lot of uh, preconceived notions of what, um, what love is and, uh, and politics and religion. And so in this case, love can't, unfortunately, overcome all those obstacles. Yeah, although it's not exactly a Romeo and Juliet, but we won't, right. we won't give the spoiler of that either. Absolutely. And uh, I will say that Ilan Ronin uh, directed, directed the play. Yes. Um, both of you uh, are, are, have dealt quite a bit with, with adaptations from books. And I know that in many theatres now, they're looking to, looking to books and looking to, 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 to adapt things from film or from books. How do you choose? How do you know what to adapt? You adapted from a novel. There were so many, so many details that you had to choose, whereas you adapted from a, a short story with almost no details and you had to add on the details. What, how do you know that this is something you can adapt? How do you know when you have it? What, what, uh, what are your, your signs? What advice could you give to the people sitting at home, the digital, the digital people there in the little box? Um, in how to, how to adapt a book into a play. Because, you know, books are for libraries, they're for the lounge, sometimes they're for restrooms, and plays are for, um, you know, kind of, I would say it's more like, it's more like where, where people would fight. It's more like it's a place of a... The gladiators. <laughs> the arena, yeah. Yeah, the arena. Right, so, so how, do you, how do you do this? I can speak for, for in the name of my husband who did the, the adaptation. Oh, but also of you've Taibale. done also adaptations. Yes. And, so. and but also we worked on this together and while looking into a lot of stories by Bashevi Zinger, um, we found another story about a deserted woman and she, it's called In Disguise. It's also a very short story but has a completely different turn from the story that we tried to adapt. And the combination between the two of them gave us the ending uh, that we wanted. Uh, I'm not going to spoil, but <laughs> the other story um, sends this woman into a, uh, to a journey to find her husband, while the, the character that we were dealing with was quite passive and was actually waiting and thinking that her husband will never come back. But the second woman we found went on a carriage and drove all the way through Poland looking for her husband until she found him in a strange situation. When we found this story, we knew that we had the play. Okay. That this is a woman that we wanted to tell. The combination between these two women, the one who, tr who started as more passive, as more naive. As a victim. As a, uh, yes, a victim of her situation. And the woman that took her own faith in her own hands and went to look for her for a new life, this combination gave us actually the adaptation, the key to the adaptation. Okay, so you had a, a strong action. Yes. And 
Yeah, um, I, I agree with that. You have, once, you, once you find the key to the adaptation, things tend to flow um, more easily. But um, I would say to anyone considering adapting, uh, whether it's a novel or a short story, um, that first thing is to love the material. Love the source material. Be passionate about it, because you're going to be spending a lot of time uh, working on this project. And, and adapting is, is hard. It's as, as hard as writing. It's as hard as writing. Right. <laughs> I mean, it is writing. So <laughs> that's something people don't and know. I think is... maybe, maybe dealing with a writer who is still alive Oh yeah, it's, that's a challenge. It's more of a challenge than dealing than with it. Yubashev Zimmer is Zimbra, it's not going to come out of his grave. Maybe he, maybe he right. will. He maybe will. <laughs> but, having, but taking the liberty to step away from the source material also and make changes to it and not necessarily stick to the book as is. You know, sometimes when I adapt something, I allow myself to change the ending uh, because I feel like it's, it does more justice to the source material. It tells the story in a better, more dramatic way. So I would say not to be afraid to um, also uh, make changes and be more flexible with the material and to absolutely love it and be willing to make tough choices, very difficult cuts or decisions if there is a bit in the book that I'm in love with because it's so beautifully written, but on stage it just doesn't work, it's not dramatic, then you have to say goodbye to it. Um, never, never fall in love. Exactly, <laughs> never fall in love. Um, you both wrote about um, uh, women. They're both the, the leading characters in both your plays. Um, is there a difference writing a woman writing women and a woman writing men? We, we talked about it a little bit before, how it's such a, an, an interesting question, yes. a controversial question even, because a lot of female uh, creators would swear by, you know, that they can write men as well as they write women, and the same goes for men creators. So, I mean, it really depends uh, on on the person you're asking. I think I'm asking you. <laughs> right. I can ask myself as well. I know that most my most my heroes are women or heroines. I think. For me, it's definitely easier to write about things I know that are closer to me. So obviously, writing women, uh, it's something that I can relate to more easily. Um, but also, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's in general, it's true for everything, writing what you know, uh, as opposed to maybe it's actually not true because you're writing about demons and it's not something that's in your <laughs> everyday life and so uh but that <laughs> maybe it is um but i think i think for me um uh you know writing i i enjoy watching strong female characters on screen or on stage and so i think it's important to write about um about women. I think that there are, you know, you said that men would also swear that they could write women just as right. well. I think that the, that the more female writers we are, then the more, the more good parts there are for women. Absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> that tends to be yes. the case. Which, yeah, which, is, which is kind right. of a proof of the, um, but, but, but what challenges do you find when, when writing men versus women? I, since I also write for children, and I have two boys at home and one girl, so, and the boys are bigger. The years that I started uh, writing for children, my main character was a boy because uh, I wrote for them and I saw them growing up and it was easier for me to identify with them as kids. Uh, and then my little one grew up and I wrote for her. Um, I think it's the connection between you and the character and this this um, actually doesn't involve gender here. If, um, if but the story... children maybe is a bit different. I don't know. I think I, think it can, I can um, see myself also writing a male character uh, for uh, an adult audience. Um, now, actually, my last work, I did a trick on myself because I took <laughs> um, four comedians, male comedians, and they are portraying the, the uh, characters of their own grandmothers. Oh, great. So they are on the stage. Oh, this is soft four, thought. Yes, it's called grandmothers. And four uh, men are playing their char the character of the... And we did this uh, strange transformation of them being also the grand... 
grand um, grandmother and the grand um, the, the grandson in the same body because they're or they're all the time looking and about the connection between them and their personal grandmother and it came out that some people did not recognize that they are men it's very very realistic the portrait it's not a drag show okay and so this was a drag trick on me <laughs> I said, okay, I want to deal with feminine characters, but through the point of view of the men who are, who are close to them when they were little, how they, are, they saw this huge uh, female figure of their, of, their, of their persona, <laughs> of their life. So actually, uh, playing with genders, for me, it's very interesting, mm -hmm. doing these kind of tricks. Yeah, actually, it's, uh, I find myself, I find myself a lot of times when I need to write, not a functional, but a, a deep... Uh, male character, I find myself kind of squeezing information out of many people around me. But no, but what would you do if? And, 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 no, say that again. <laughs> we steal, we steal. Absolutely. Did you play? Did you play a, a male character as an actress? Um, yeah, yeah, but in comedy, in uh, in, in satirical in stuff, and yeah, it's uh, and also for children, and also for children. Um, so. So what now? What next? We have now this baby boom thing with theater after Corona. There are like plays and it seems like this, this creativeness is bursting out of everyone. <laughs> I think it was there all through this uh, strange year and a half. And everybody was writing at home and preparing. And there were a lot of projects that they just, just wanted to come into the world. And yeah, it's, fl it's f the. The stage is, uh, is exploding from uh, creativity in all kinds of uh, genres. It's beautiful. The, the audience is still a bit afraid. Um, less and less, I think. Less and less. Third vaccination was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're was privileged easier. here in Israel to yes. have uh, to have that. Um, yeah, I think theaters have or are still recovering, obviously, but. Yes. Uh, with all the rivers, I was nine months pregnant when wow. we finished the play, uh, and then COVID happened. And your son is bar mitzvah now. My daughter, <laughs> no, daughter. my daughter is a year and four months old when it came months. out. It, it was a year of uh, coronavirus before uh, we were able to give birth to the play officially. So, um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I'm, I'm working now on, a, on a, another adaptation, this time of a, a short story, a, no, a novella by uh, Savion Liebrecht, um, and it's about motherhood. Who is also a well-known playwright. Yes, she is, oh. um, and, and an author. She's. I, I believe that these things, that these, uh, as you said, it's about motherhood just after you gave birth. These things come yeah. to us. Absolutely. Things come to us at the right time. Right, yes. They meet us in our lives, um, our creations. Well, thank you very, very much, thank Noga you. Ashkenazi, Shiri Lideshe. Thank you. And now for something completely different. All the world's a stage? I don't know. Let's see an excerpt from a play called Wedding at a Time of Plague. <laughs> אני דוקטור תמרי ממחלקת האור של בית החולים הדסה ועוד כמה חודשים, בינואר 1950 ליתר דיוק, אני אהפוך באופן רשמי למנהל החדש של המוסד. כאן לצידי עומדות המנהלות האמיתיות של המקום, שגרות כאן בקרב המצורעים ומקדישות למעשה את רוב חייהן לטיפול מסור בהם. האחות הראשית יוהנה, סגניתה אליסיה והאחות הצעירה גרטה. אני בטוח שזה לא קל להיכנס הנה. מפגש עם צרעת יכול להיות מאוד מרתיע. ישנם דיירים שאפילו המשפחות שלהם דחו אותם באימה. אנחנו המשפחה שלהם עכשיו. כולנו. אנחנו כעת נוביל אתכם לסיור קצר במקום. בבקשה מועלה, בבקשה מועלה. ליזה, מה קרה? אני מצאתי עוד נגע. תני לי לבדוק. אני מצאתי עוד נגע! רגע אחד, תירגעי, תני לי לבדוק, בבקשה. כן, אני אלך, אני לא מאמינה, אני לא מאמינה. תפסיקי
אני יפה בעיניך? לא. הנה, אתה רואה? שמעי, באמת, נו, אין איזה צורה ככה. לא, ליזה, זאת רק פטריה. כנראה ריאקציה לחומר חיטוי. אני אתן לך משחה, תוך יומיים זה יעבור, אני מבטיח. ליזה, ליזה, בואי, בואי, בואי. תתכונני להצגה, תסיימי את כל הכביסה שלך, אנחנו מתחילים עוד מעט, בסדר? דוקטור תמרי, הם תפרו לי את הסימן כמו שאני רציתי. ליזה, מספיק, תסיימי עם הכביסה. אוקיי, so, before Shiri Lidesha was speaking about creators who sat home and wrote to be ready for what will happen after lockdown, but Aya Kaplan, a director and a playwright whose plays can be seen in most of the prominent theaters in Israel today, um, did not wait for lockdown to be over. If all the world's a stage, then she was going to find a stage for her play. and to find a play for her stage, and to find where life and stage meets, and how, and what are we doing with all this creativity inside us. So, Aya Kaplan, do you want to tell us a bit about what we just saw, the opening of, of, um, of uh, a wedding in the time of play? Um, yes. Um, <laughs> thank you for the introduction, because that's actually what happened uh, during lockdown. I was so frustrated. Uh, with all the theaters and generally all the venues were shut down. Yeah, may maybe we should say there are countries that the theaters were partially open in. There are countries where I know that they had rehearsals, but here there was nothing. Yeah, we were considered was... unessential. We were cast aside yes. <laughs> very brutally. Yes, it, it, it's important to say that because that's what uh, brought me to feel that I absolutely have to do something. I felt so strongly. Uh, and plus, everyone around me, and probably every, everybody can ad identify with that, e everybody were so frightened. What's happening to us as a society? What's happening to us as a human race? What's, what's this pandemic all of a sudden? And I felt the urge to make some sort of theatri theatrical comment about that. And, somehow to embrace the situation uh, in a way that, you know, plagues, pandemics, it, it's part of history. It's, yeah, it's not the it's first part time. Of being, yes. And I wanted to be uh, campy and funky about it. So I approached uh, Udi and Elisheva. The, uh, in the Khan Theater. In the Khan Theater, the managers of the Khan Theater. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to do an installation, a site-specific installation about uh, pan the pandemic. And they say, oh, it's interesting because we want to collaborate with Hansen House, uh, which is an art center, but for more than 100 years, it used to be uh, the notorious uh, leprosorium of Jerusalem. Ooh, huh? <laughs> uh, and they say, okay, let's go, to, let's do a tour over there. And the moment I, a week later, the moment I stepped into Beth Hansen, I don't know, the idea just landed completely. And, um, I'll tell a bit about yes, the production. Yes, tell a bit about the... the yeah, sorry about it. But it is, it is a, a site-specific show. Yes. Which happens is. in a few places, not, not only in one place. I mean, I was, I was astounded at the way you had to actually measure the time yes. so that the audience split up, goes into different rooms and come back all together to the same place. Yeah, it's actually... It's, uh, it's, actually, it's so complicated because it's... You need to engineer it. Yes, it's... Uh, I, I, I think our audience are going to watch it, but they haven't watched it yet. Yeah? Yes, it's, it's because, just... because it needed this explanation beforehand. Yes. The whole play, the full play is not yet on the site, but it will be after our talk. Yes. Um, so I will explain that uh, it's a play inside a play, and um, the frame story takes place uh, in the Leprosorium at 1950. When the Leprosorium is where the lepers are held. Yes. For those that are... It's like uh, they're in quarantine for life. Quarantine, yes, quarantine, forever. Sorry. Oh, my goodness. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, and anyhow, they, um, the main doctor and uh, the nurses from... Uh, the doctor is Israeli. The nurses are uh, from the Moravian church that established the place. Uh, they opened the gate for one night for the first time for all the neighbors to come and meet the lepers. Uh, of course, they made it up. It never happened. People were frightened. <laughs> People were too scared. Yes. yes. Um, and today that happens too. 
that's why I yes, thought of it course. was such a good idea. I'm just going backwards and forwards. <laughs> Anyhow, so... It's uh, in the 1950s, yeah? Ni yes, exactly, 1950. And uh, they divide the audience into four groups. And they are going to, um, in groups, to, uh, to a like, 30 minutes tour around the, the Leprosorium. Uh, uh, and the tour is being constantly interrupted by the lepers. That's how you get to meet them. And at the end of the tour, uh, everybody uh, gets together at, uh, at the main patio uh, to watch an amateur play that the doctor, who is also an amateur director, uh, decided to create together with the medical staff and the lepers in order to give them some sense of I don't know how to say it exactly, but to feel better about the life. Essential, it's some essential, feeling. Yes. Some, maybe we should see now the, the other excerpt we have from the moment in the play when something happens. Can we please have the second excerpt of Wedding at a Time of Plague? I think many people... <laughs> Stuck between politicians and microbes. Oh, that sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe we should explain that uh, the part we've just uh, been watching, it's uh, in the middle of the play inside the play. Yes. And the lepers, they feel very bad about acting and they want to stop it all. And the rabbi... Who is the doctor. Who is the doctor, uh, has this uh, monologue. Uh, I... Can I explain a bit about the play? I, I just want to play? introduce, we, we will, oh, sorry. Com we will yeah. come back to this. I would like to introduce okay. another artist, multi-talented artist um, from different kinds of arts, who also did not sit at home and wait for the lockdown to be over and to be essential again, because she doesn't need much. If she needs something site-specific, she has her body. She needs a piece of paper, a few colors, and she's, she's there. Uh, empty page or clean page? What do you call it in English? Uh, I call it carte blanche. Ah, carte blanche. Because it's like... Uh, oh, you I want to go French. French? Yes. Okay, I she's testing my French <laughs> because I spoke about... But if not, it's blank slate. Blank slate. Okay. Michal Svironi. Hello. Um, your blank slate has so much in it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is why I needed to make a show on it. <laughs> Because I'm looking for the blank slate. Is it possible to have a blank slate? Are we possible to be a blank slate? Are we? Are we born blank slates? Am I able to 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 create a blank slate for the next generation? Oh, this is the emotional baggage that we're 
that yeah. were... Can we get rid or, uh, I don't know, yeah, can we not be, I don't know, victims of this emotional baggage that we, we have? Takes us time us to realize. All the time. Even here. <laughs> Who's there? A lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A lot. So, uh, um, yeah, I, this is... Uh, Looking for you, you, you deal you deal in your play in a very very artistic way, um, with with art, but also with relationships, um, parents to children, and the children that then become parents, and uh, and how and how we say goodbyes and how we say hellos and how we can continue and how life is a strong force, maybe stronger than anything. Um, I think maybe we'll see a short excerpt. All right. The, the carte blanche. Carte blanche. Carte blanche. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll get it right in the end. It is interesting. Yes. <laughs> אומרים בצרפתית, כשמישהו מת, אין לו זקיתה, הוא עזב אותה, עזב, כן! הוא עזב, אבל הוא יכול לחזור. כשהייתי, זיגותה. פעם אחת לדבר, גם לי מותר לומר משהו בבית הזה. תתני לבן אדם לסיים משפט. אני לא רק כספומט. אתם בחיים לא תשכחו אותי, זה ברור? אתם לא תשכחו אותי, נכון? I must say that I, I, saw you, I saw your play and it was amazing how you just began one person and there was so much going on in so many different ways. So many people. <laughs> I told you. They're all around. Yeah, we are all connected with this. Are, are you lines. comfortable? Are you, you, you're, you're okay? Um, no, I feel, I feel a little strange, I must say. I mean, I feel like there is something in my chair. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Oh, what is that? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what is it? I think I'm turning into ashes. You? It looks like stardust. Oh, maybe it's my stardust. Maybe it's your stardust. <laughs> Yes, you know what, it is my stardust story. I have to leave something, some prints. I'm not going to leave like this. The world and I'm just going to transform into a dead body. Really, I have my stardust here and I'm going to become immortal. I'm going to immortalize this moment just right here, right now with my woo, ashes, uh, stardust, yep. Sorry, don't I'm leave sorry. your ashes here, okay? Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm going to make a self-portrait of myself, something amazing you will never forget, right? They're never, never going to forget me. And the cleaner. Here. This is you. Um, actually, not so very well. Wait, I can do better. I can do better. Okay, so I will speak wait. to Aya whilst you do better. Uh, really? You think? Yes. Oh, no. You want to tell us how you're going to do better? I'm going to do better. Um, it's just taking one minute. You know, I'm, very, I'm like... I'm, I'm like uh, okay. I'm, it's amazing. I can do it very fast. Look, I'm going to do like, um, like a very amazing... Self-portrait, <laughs> something like, uh, you know, like Leonardo da Vinci and uh, the Mona Lisa. Nobody's going to forget it. It's going to be hang in the Louvre. It's going to be immortalized. Me. I'm going to become very famous. Never die. Never die. It's just one minute. Sorry. Sorry so we are, we are dealing, we are dealing with, we are dealing with life and death here. Yeah. We are. It yeah. is, it is. Isn't it why we're all doing this? And yeah, all right. It's here it is. It is ready. I'm ready. 
like Pablo Picasso and Pablo Picasso. Me. Now it is Michal Spironi <laughs> and... Is this you? Show me you, show me you. Well, it, it looks a little bit... I think maybe it's a little bit more like my mother. Oh, yes. I don't know. It's not exactly like I wanted <laughs> it. And, and also in the crying. end, we find ourselves... Oh, goodness. Yeah. We find ourselves looking in the mirror in the end and looking at our mothers too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank <laughs> you, Michal. At least they left something. Not going to forget, huh? <laughs> Oh gosh, um, you're so talented. You have, oh you have so, so, ma so, much, so many techniques here. So many amazing techniques. It's my magic. Well, you have, you have uh, um, whilst, whilst you are, whilst you are, uh, your hands, you need to, the, you're okay? You want to, no, no, me not to print on me. On you not you want not to forget me? <laughs> I can't forget you. I want That's to, th this, this theme of, of life and death that is, is so strong in, uh, mm -hmm. in both your works in very, very different ways, but also the play inside the play yes. is, is also has to do with what we've been going through the last year and a half. Yeah, um, leprosy is not a plague. It's not even that contagious. People didn't know that back in yes. the 50s. But um, the play, it's based on Yud Lamed Peretz, short story. Peretz uh, was an extremely uh, famous and important Jewish uh, writer, uh, writer from Zamosht. Yes, and um, uh, the story is about a, a small, tiny, remote Jewish town who waits fearly for the <laughs> cholera pandemic uh, that's about to hit her, getting oh. closer and closer, destroying vill destroy village after village, and they uh, panically open the holy books. It's a Jewish community trying to find any possible, you know, spell or ceremony or prayer or uh, uh, talisman, anything that can abolish the, uh, the yeah. pandemic. And finally, the rabbi, who uh, the doctor plays the rabbi, the leader of the community of the lepers, plays the leader of this community, he finds this crazy, extremely dark ceremony called a black wedding, which is, by the way, a completely real ceremony. Yes, we, uh, have, we have many real things that are unbelievable and yeah. incredible in and our It is unbelievable, culture. and it's, you take two orphans, a boy and a girl, poor orphan, uh, from the community, and you marry them in the middle of the night, in the middle of the cemetery, under a black hoopa, when everybody... Canopy, a canopy. Yes, canopy with everybody, including the bride, were black. And that's supposed somehow to create... A to prevent the... Yeah, to create this perfect storm of good deeds that's supposed to stop the, uh, the pandemic. But what I really want to say, and that's what's so fun, because it's a dark comedy, uh, this play inside the play with songs, uh, that it's not about the people who fear the uh, pandemic. It's about those, the heroes are those who want the pandemic to come. They're waiting for the pandemic as if they're waiting for a miracle. Like uh, Yosef. The orphans that want the to get orphans, married. Orphans, yes. Like yes. Uh, all the poor uh, orphans. Like there's Yosel. It's an opportunity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and another one who waits for the... This uh, cynicism is found a lot in uh, Brecht as well. Yes. And, and the, there's a young Christian doctor that... Uh, uh, been sent to this uh, community from Warsaw, Warsaw, yes. yes, and he he's so annoying and he's so he thinks they're stupid and arrogant and he wants them to uh, embrace science and he tried to teach them about disinfection and about hygiene and they like go away we have our prayers and yeah. <laughs> he wants the pandemic to come and then he can you know get rich. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> everyone will want to come to him for some medicine. Yes. Oh, oh, I will not comment. <laughs> no comment. There are no, no people like this in the world. No, no, none, none, anymore. none. It's only fantasy. It's fantasy. It's a fantasy world. Um, so, Michal. Yeah. How, how, how many, you know, this is instead of doing therapy, your play? <laughs> I can't believe you ask it. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's amazing. It is. It's, it has so much, it is so much packed in one hour that I felt I went through therapy. When I, you actually saved me. Thank you. A few hours, this you know, on my, the couch. This is more, yeah. Because, 
of course, and it's cheaper as any, well. Any artist who is really working from his guts is doing. Uh, it's not a secret. I mean, people are, think it's like a bad thing to say it's therapy. Of course, it's therapy. It's bad if it's not therapy. I think. But now the question is, if you have the skills uh, to have the and the, and the way to look at it from far away and to be able to to make it not private, but also that it can reach other people and touch other people. And I think that in this show, like, I mean, I'm always dealing with the personal material, but uh, there are so many, the subjects, they are national, international, like human, you know? But it's very I, feminine. Your play is very feminine. Yes. Uh, wait, I just I want to finish the other okay. uh, sentence. Is that every, every person can relate to another to different layers, if, mm -hmm. uh, you know, according to where they are in their life. So some people are more related to the relationship with the parents, other more to the death, the other to the problem with the children. Everybody is really reacting uh, according to their place in life. And my place in life, yes, I'm a woman. Oh yeah. So this is my point of view, and. Um, about life and then um, yeah this is uh, of course i'm dealing with my problems with my issues uh, as a daughter as a mother as a um so and with my body so um if this is where you're, go, you're yes. going yeah so um and your body and the issue of reproduction reprodu reproduction which you do not only yes. not only through your body but also you actually do it physically through art. You have yeah. these amazing stamps that you drew them, you made them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all the things in, in this show, I mean... Um, can I pick this up? Yeah, in case you can. Uh, it's the other way. These stamps that I paint and then we make stamps. It's for the... I mean, I will tell you. Because my idea uh, is how to uh, combine between theatre and, um, and plastic arts. So um, I think after many years of research and tries and many different, uh, we, during the corona actually, and before also, also because we also were stopped in the middle, uh, we had the time to, to break the code, I think, and to find the, a language that uh, is composed by different techniques like skills, like uh, artists of, uh, I don't know, circus artists, they have their skills. So these are my skills. And now how can I make from this uh, poetry, you know, not just technique. And this is what I find interesting, to, to find the, the action and the poetry in the action and, and what, is, what can it be related to. And sometimes uh, I have the story first and I'm looking for the techniques that goes with it. What, what in your life For happened? example. Yeah. Okay. Right. What in your life happened that you, you found a way to put it into the, into the, um, into the play, into the performance. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> well, you know, no. we, have know. To, we have to pick a, an example. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I so want you to give, I want you to give the example. I want you to give an example so that people understand that, uh, you know, our life, we are the material and we are the creators and everything that happens to us in the end is, can be taken to somewhere um, that goes to death, and it can be taken to someone that goes to life and to creation. Yes, I'm playing the creator in this uh, in this show, and, and and yeah, what I'm what I think what you are referring to is um, I have a, a moment. Uh, it's one moment we can tell, like an example. I was thinking and about uh, my daughter and how I mean the whole show is talking a lot about separations, and every morning when I put her to kindergarten, it's like ah. She's almost died, like it's horrible, horrible separation. And then I said, okay, I stayed so with my daughter in kindergarten for eight months. Oh my God. <laughs> they all say I'm the one of those horrible <laughs> women. They I'm all say the problem is with me. Yes, yes. You know? I'm the fear of all kindergarten teachers. <laughs> exactly. And then they hate you. And I hate It's a very complicated relationship. So I was like, there is a problem of relationship, uh, of separation in our uh, um, family. Actually, there are no separations. Uh, everybody died just in very strange ways. Everybody since so many years back. Uh, as long oh my as goodness, we're going back to the demons of yeah, Shirili Dejan. Exactly. So, once, uh, so I said, this is, I don't want to reproduce the same pattern. And then pattern, oh, I love patterns. Let's make stamps. So we made a stamp <laughs> of, my, uh, of my daughter 
Um, she says it, she doesn't look like it, but uh, anyway, it's my daughter, <laughs> and and we. Just this this will this will be afterwards the proof that you know, she can say what she wants, but this will this will live in five hundred years. <laughs> exactly, I hope in the Louvre. <laughs> so um, so we made a, there is a moment with stamps, and this was like uh, the action that we found how to not create patterns. So we create a pattern um, that is. And, and we have other patterns, and then we sell T-shirts if you want, and then <laughs> and you and you and you actually d can do I, it on I anything. Think I think to do combine um, theater and merchandise, I love it. We should do it in Israel. <laughs> I had She's a doing professor it. in only uh, her. It's, it's yes. brilliant. I no, it's, it's brilliant. It's, you're, you're gonna people. sell. You're gonna sell the black plague in little boxes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. more and more people are doing it. I mean, I remember, I, it's really something I remember very well from when I was uh, studying in the Sorbonne, uh, that I had one teacher, and he said, you cannot make money from theater. The only way you can make money from theater is merchandise. <laughs> okay. It's it like, bring, all right. But we are not making so much money even from the <laughs> merchandise. <laughs> but we make art. And yes, art is a way of, my way of living, and living art and... So everything yeah, is related. I, I, I think all over the world, the, the idea of, you know, just to, to stop, to cancel theater, to cancel the stage, like you, you, you cannot group for, for yeah. I don't know, so and so months. So there's no art, there's no theater. It's crazy. I think... Uh, but this is really when there was something that you actually put together in your play, in your site-specific play, this is really when there began a fight between religion yes. and, and secular people because, you know, we, people want the theater is our religion. They're actually in Croatia. I know that this was actually said. If you're closing the theaters, you need to close the churches and the theaters were left open. Yeah, it, it oh, is really? our yes. church. I am, oh, wow. I am a religious person, but my religion is theater. Yes. And I, there are so many layers in, the, uh, in this event, yes, uh, this site-specific event. Like the, uh, the leper who plays the young doc doctor trying to bring science to this community is a young leper who is afraid from the new cure they brought, antibiotics. He doesn't know what yeah. antibiotic is. He doesn't believe in that. You know nothing about it. There's no uh, but even but surgery, even but yeah. like 200 years before that, the doctors that try to uh, introduce hygiene because there are bacteria that we cannot see and demons, blah blah blah. They were, they were uh, put to death. Yeah, I you know I they were I, put I, to I death. read a lot about it. They were during the famous uh, pandemics, like mm -hmm. the cholera pandemic. Uh, they they were. They burn doctors. Yes, yes. They burn yes. doctors. Wow. It's crazy. <clears throat> so are you making one for me? Are you making one? Am I making one for you? Do you want me not to forget me? Oh yes, my God. God. What's Where? going on? Where are you? Where I don't you know. Do You're going to have to do it here because I have a microphone on my back. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's not easy. I okay. hope my daughter doesn't kill me because she also so likes this jacket. No, I think she would love it. How about she? <laughs> Don't do it upside down. <laughs> I, I'm afraid. I don't now. believe I, this. I think we have the same daughter. Tom. It's, it's all the same. If you want, you can you can have her. <laughs> oh, your daughter. Yeah. Maybe. One. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. One. Two, no regrets. Go. Ah, okay. Stand on it a little bit. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yeah. We can continue talking. <laughs> Okay, so I think that we are reproducing here art and theater. And um, I do want to speak to you one sentence, Aya, about, yes. about gender. Because when yes. we said that this, this session is a gender blender, uh, you answered me something that you must repeat now. <laughs> you said to me, why should... Remember? I, I don't. <laughs> you don't remember? No, because we talked for so long. Yeah. You said... Why should I have to speak about my gender? Oh, right. <laughs> okay, you can take it from um, here. Are you ready? Yes, because uh, I'm one of the leaders, I'll tell the audience who watch us, uh, I'm one of the leaders of uh, a feminine group of directors, and uh, we're doing now um, this, I don't know, so-called program uh, that encourages theaters uh, to create... Uh, 
you know, a situation of 50% of the directors are women. Yes. Uh, which is crazy that we should protest against yeah. that. Because of the, uh, well, I think there are 50% of the directors women, but not in the repertoire theatres. No, not, not where there's money. Yeah, not right, yeah. speaking of money. And when we talked on the phone, so you said, let's say something about that. And I just suddenly felt like rage, like... I want to talk about my art, yes, because <laughs> men are going to talk about their art, and I want to talk about my art as well but but no after after i we finished talking i I thought you're probably right because it's part of who I am, as Michal said I, I'm doing in my art about my life, and I'm a woman, so yes, I'm a woman, and I think the other side of my work, and I want to say a few words about mm -hmm. that it's a feminine side. Yes. Uh, when I created uh, Doing As He Wishes or uh, uh, The Return. So it's about problems of women, oppression of women and depression of women in Israel. Yes. And the situation in Israel, the reality in Israel, unfortunately, gives us a lot of material. So much material to work with. <laughs> you know, I come from a very, very, <laughs> a very closed world in those senses. Yes, I know. So um, I don't think I always going to write about women, like in Wedding in a Time of Plague. It's not only about women, it's about uh, the others, the left out, the others like, at the fringe yes. of society. Um, but, but I think that naturally, when you have more women in theater, you get more feminine narratives. Right. And, and more feminine roles. Yes, it's part of having feminine and narratives. Maybe, and maybe a, a, some kind of change in art, and maybe something that will bring something new. Because uh, in yes. too many places, in too many places... Uh, yes, because I, I, I think that if you don't like... You know what, I, I, I have something important to say from my heart that uh, I started this talk with saying that I felt a strong edge, urge to do something. And another layer, well, maybe not a main layer, but another layer of the site-specific events that I created is that I placed the frame story in uh, 1950. And in that specific time, uh, the Mor Moravian church sold the place to the new state of Israel and the nurses left to Jordan to another leprosorium and most of the Muslim lepers moved with them. So, of course, I recruit uh, uh, Arab actors uh, to join uh, the cast, which was wonderful. Amazing. Uh, yes, Yara Zrayek and um, Anan Abu Jabir. And the Khan Theater. Super talented. They're now part of the Khan Theater. Yes, I'm happy great. To say, as they joined. Uh, and this production was uh, conceived during pandemic, during the pl plague, but was born during the war, because at the last week of oh, rehearsal... Oh, yes, we had, we had a war we as well. I'm just reminding you, we had everything in this last We had year. this another pointless circle of violence. Yes. And we found ourselves, Jewish and Arab actors together, in the center of Jerusalem, trying stubbornly to continue doing theater. And they changed our uh, opening night again and again and again because the riots yes. didn't stop. And we got extremely closer because of that situation. And I think after I felt so hard on my flesh the, uh, the consequences of pandemic to theater and to society. And after experience this another war as artist, I feel that you can never, never stop doing art because you need it's, it. That's so beautiful what you're yeah, saying. What, what, what Michal said and you said about Michal's performance that it was like therapy for you. 
I wanted to bring therapy to the audience as well, and to myself, and to society. Maybe it's like a big thing to say, but that's why you're doing art, and that's I why I, 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 I made the doctor a director, an amateur director, yes. the doctor as a healer, or uh, the director as a healer, or if you wish. I love that, and I, de I identify with that a lot, also as a creator. I think we, we, sh we need to um, stop being ashamed of the word. Yes. Of, of having a mission with our art. Yes. Because it Otherwise, is, why, why are we doing that? Because we're so narcissistic. Well, as we, as yes, we said, maybe we're not narcissistic, for money. but for money, it's, <laughs> it's not. not. Maybe Michal, yes, she's it. going to be rich because we have... Because <laughs> you have merchandise. Yes. And I have the best jacket in wow. the world. Wow! <laughs> it is The coolest, beautiful. gorgeous. Michal, I'm going to bring you a jacket <laughs> as well, okay? No, I'm serious. I'm Okay, hey, we all win. it's cool. I, I, I it's a new one. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I really have to part with you because speaking of gender, I'm going to speak about gender from a completely different uh, direction with a male artist who will be the next and last guest. So stay with us. Thank you, Thank Aya you Kaplan. So Thank you, Michal Svironi. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. אני מחפש מודל גבריות בר קיימא בעבורי. אני לא מוצא את זה בך, אני לא מוצא את זה בך, אני לא מוצא את זה בך, לא מוצא את זה בפסיכולוג שלי, לא מוצא את זה באבא שלי, לא מוצא את זה בחבר הכי טוב שלי. מחפש את זה אצל גברים מפורסמים. מחפש את זה אצל גברים שהגיעו עד הלום. מחפש את זה אצל גברים שאני מעריץ אותם. מחפש את זה אצל גברים שאני מפחד מהם. מיכל, you left your mother here, you know. I have a mother of my own. אורן אילם. Thank you for joining us. This is you. Uh, Oren Elam is a multidisciplinary artist, graduated from Bezalel Academy of Arts and Design. You're a director and a performer, and your works deal with masculinity and how, and how the fears of masculinity um, have very, very deep influences on the projection in life. Um, that is what I saw in your show as well. So maybe tell us a bit about the show and maybe begin with the, with the name of the show. Um, okay, so the name of the show, um, now I need to remember <laughs> how to say it to English. Um, the, guide, the, uh, the Guide for Strayed Assessed donkey, Donkeys? No. Donkeys or asses? Asses, sorry. Yes. Asses, the female, the female. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a part of... Um, on um, our books, um, there's a the big story about in the Shaul Bible, the king. Yeah, about Shaul the Saul king. the king. Sh Saul the king that uh, he searched for the uh, lost uh, donkeys, asses, asses of, of his father, and he didn't want to be a king, but somehow uh, the prophet was given to him. Uh, to, uh, the, Shaul the prophet uh, made him, gave him the kingdom, so he searched for the lost donkeys, the asses of his father, and found the kingdom, and it became the first king of Israel. Yes, this is, this is the saying. He went to look for asses, and he came back with a crown on his head. Agree. <laughs> uh, but what happened meanwhile is uh, he, he didn't want it at the beginning. He jumped to some uh, big, um, to be the king of Israel, and he didn't plan to be the king. And he left, if his life was uh, really uh, tragic. He ended uh, his life on a death on a war, uh, yes. while uh, his head was chopped. And before that, he was jealous about the new king, David, that come. And this is representing the Israeli masculinity of chasing of something that you will, you're not able to achieve. Jealous, fear, war. And it's something that designed, I believe, the Israeli masculinity. Um, maybe king is the symbol of masculinity. Uh, and uh, trying to hold this symbol when all you're really looking for is to find the asses. <laughs> that's right. I think is, king, king is... It's something that's very difficult to hold. Yes. Uh, to be a king, 
By the way, the, the, the show is not about the story. We, we just no, talk no, the, about the yes. story, but in, in a way that we want to demonstrate The show something. is about the three, you are three performers together. Yeah, that we represent uh, ourselves. Uh, yeah, Israel and uh, speaking about fears of, fears of men in today's times. Yes. The phobias, the post-traumas. Um, maybe we deal too much with, with uh, female post-traumas. Um, I think there is, there is not enough dealing with the traumas in any gender. That's the problem. Nobody's dealing enough with traumas. And now, only now, because of uh, the revolution that we're all having now, um, women started at last uh, express the trauma. While men keep them, the, the trauma hide. And we, I, I believe some of us maybe there have is a been... Song in, there is a song in Israel, uh, Men Cry at Night. Yes, <laughs> Men Cry at Night. Um, so I believe that uh, men, they're, af they're afraid to show their traumas, but all, everyone in Israel has trauma, you know. He, the, 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 the guest before me talk, uh, talked about the war that, had, that was happened uh, not that far. War, it's something that my uh, foreign friends, I, I, I told them that there, were, there are wars in Israel every couple of years, and uh, it's, for yes. them it's extremely weird, and everybody is traumatic also. Our cats and dogs. But they're dogs. not called wars, they're called operations. Operations. Because if they're called wars, then they have to pay more money, if yeah. compensation <laughs> if something happens to you. So, so um, no, we're not, we're not talking about wars, but there are traumas. Yeah, <laughs> in the south of Israel, the cats and the dogs have PTSD because of the bombs. Yes. So everybody has it, and especially women has it in terms of gender. But also male are exposed to violence. I, to allow, you, I allow you not to speak about the women's traumas in this session. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we can speak about the men's So the male trauma was um, PTSD from the army, exposing to violence on, on ch childhood, uh, on school. It is something that not many, just now, because after the, the show I started to speak with men about it, and they told me about the, the, the extreme violence that were exposed at school, even just by yes. seeing the violence, not only being part of the violence, and sometimes the, 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 the kid who, who was the, the bully, the hit, he's also sometimes a victim of what happened in his family, and then he uh, doing to others. So it's something that uh, everybody, boys don't talk about it, but everybody know it. But do you, but do you think, and I'm, I'm not talking about women's traumas, but I'm, I'm saying, do you think that the change in the status of women is something that is uh, helping this to arise in, in, in men, or, or maybe, even, maybe even creating traumas? I mean, how can a... How can a man be a king? Um, I think that the revolution, the meat. I mean, me can too, you think of can you think of King Solomon if his thousand women would have suddenly become feminists? <laughs> he would be gone. I uh, agree. I think uh, we have a, a different, uh, maybe version of. For me, a queen. I, I'm just in my personal view that um, for me, Angela Merkel is huge. It's something beyond any king, male or, or female. It's, it's something amazing and big and even for me above genders. And nowadays, um, because of the Me Too revolution, boys also started to talk in one hand and in other hand to reflect how they, they behave till now. I mean, everybody know at school how we used to talk about girls behind their back. <coughs> and not now, just people just start to, to say it because of the Russian, oh, we used to do that when we were kids. We used to talk this and that about girls. And it's, it, 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 it's also kind of bullying, even just the way we speak. So it's something that something. nowadays, I believe, changed. And it started on the, on the women's side. And now it influences the boys and all the genders. And, and you sp first of all, the, the, the show, I must say, it's, it's a lot of fun. The show yeah, yeah. is a lot of fun. fun, and you kind of say this is not deductive. This is not an educational. I hate deductive <laughs> art. I hate deductive <laughs> art. Okay. Uh, our show trying to represent three male, the way they act behind the scene. The, the dynamics between us is the it's the exact dynamic behind the scenes, but with a more dramatic volume, more intense. But it's the same dynamic. You put three males on a group, they start to make laugh at each other. That's what happened. Three males, nobody, even if it's, uh, you know, a philosopher, a, a, a Shakespeare, and uh, I don't know, a psychologist, a you put them a in builder. A, a builder. <laughs> you put them in a room, they start to laugh at each other and hide, hide their emotions, hide what's happening inside, how they hide their stories. So we will reveal them by laughing. Um, um, you know, after I, after I saw your show, 
um, there was a situation in the school of my son, who is 11, and um, there I know that the two boys took one boy and they locked him in a cupboard and uh, tied, his, tied his hands or afterwards tied him to a chair and something that was a big, big trauma in the school, which is considered mm -hmm. an amazing school and how can something like this happen here? And I was thinking a lot of your, of your show and the way it, it kind of reflects how these things stay. These things stay. So what, um, your, your, your answer, a bit like Michal, is in art. Uh, what do you say about it in, in the school of your son? It's, I, I remember that in my school it was like once a month an occasion like that and nobody made a deal because it was the, the, the regular day and nowadays people start to understand that it's horrible what happened to, to the kid but in, in my time, I'm 35, it was once a month, something like that. And yeah, which I, I believe yesterday I had a conversation with a friend about it, if uh, art can heal. And um, I think... Not the art itself when you're on the stage, because when you're the sta on, on stage, you're, you're entertained, you, you're on a job, but behind the scenes, the rehearsals, this is the uh, healing part. Therapeutic, yeah. the therapeutic part. Um, so the guide to searching for asses? A, a, a straight asses, yeah. A straight asses, yeah. okay, oh, because we're not talking about, you know, I, I, I've, I have this thing lately, we're speaking of gender in general, that uh, I, I, I take part in some uh, um, Zoom conferences and the first time someone asked me, uh, they said, okay, each one will introduce yourself and then it came to me and said, uh, what are your pronouns? And I'm like, my, my, my what? My, my pronoun? What? I didn't understand where this is going to. So, uh, <laughs> so yes, uh, you're saying straight asses. Um, Speaking about manlyhood, in a, in a way that, uh, and I, I, but I do want to ask how much you think, um, you know, maybe it's better not to speak about things. Sometimes, maybe it's better, you know, the things our parents went through, the things our grandparents went through. If they would speak about it, would it help them, or would it break them? And and maybe denial is also a way of dealing with things. It depends how you do it, because uh, you can come to uh, your therapist and talk and feel better, and you can uh, sit with friends and someone will make fun of uh, your revealing and then you feel horrible. So if you do it on a safe zone, which is the theater, when the, the, the audience know that nothing, happen, nothing bad going to happen to him, but we do going to speak about embarrassing things. We, we, we literally speak about our penises, and we literally speak about our bones. Yes, you have an illuminated... And, yeah. <laughs> so, and we, we, we deal with fruits, and we sculpture the fruits, and we talk about our penises. And uh, not in a way that, uh, ha-ha, uh, penis, I'm, a, 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 you know, great in the Not bed. the macho. Yeah, the just macho. Uh, someone, there is a point of uh, all the dialogues uh, are private stories of us. And what I try to do is to uh, bring stories from the actors and shape them and make, order, make some order and make some uh, movement between them. So one of the stories is uh, a lad talk about um, the moment he, he was a, a great swimmer at school and he talked about the moment at the swimming pool that he was about to laugh about one of the new swimmers. And then uh, on the showers, he saw that he has a huge penis and he felt so embarrassed because his wasn't like his. So um, that point, th th this is the way of speaking that men don't talk about their body uh, like that. And we have, a, I read them, there is a big book now in Israel called uh, Erot. Um, yes, it says, Awake. Yeah, stories of, uh, I'm not sure how much, uh, women that... Say the most embarrassing and hiding yes. stories from their lives. And there is some a male version of that um, called Mitorim, also a, a waking a, a waking, yeah. Awakening. And uh, people just now start to, to share the embarrassing stories. And people are not used to talk about their embarrassing stories. You, you open TikTok and Facebook and everybody is expressing uh, their success and how much they uh, discovered in their lives. And everybody is guru. But nobody say the embarrassing things. And this... Mm can be healing. I is, this, is this documentary theatre? What would you call your kind of theatre? Uh, all, mm, I would say that 90% is documentary, 10% is completely fictional. Uh, there is some stories there that are completely 
we, we lie to the audience and make him believe that it, would, it, it happened. But uh, most of the, the stories did happen. Um, it's not documentary, I think, because it's more a, a live performance. I mean, we represent ourselves. We're not playing someone's life. It's happening now on stage. Oh, but that, that can happen in documentary theater. Uh, yeah, so, and, and also, <laughs> yeah, I believe, but we, we, there is some fake there. And yeah, we, that, 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 we, that, we, otherwise we, it would just be uh, a lecture, maybe. Yeah, yeah, and we don't want to be a lecture. And also, not all of the dynamics between us is true. But we made them, you know, we put yeah, steroids on the sharp, fights. Sharpen and we them put too. Yeah, and uh, so, yeah, there is part of the documentary and some part completely will lie to the audience. We say some story and it's a complete lie. Uh, because I was trying to think what, you know, how, would, how I would describe it. It's not, it's not a repertoire. It's a fringe. It's a fringe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think it's kind of fringe documentary performance uh, in which... Really, and, and uh, you know, we, we're talking about the, the breaking of gender. Mm -hmm. uh, what is womanhood? What is manhood? What is a king? It, this is happening in theatre as well. The structures are changing. The structures are being broken. Um, what was once considered a, um, a well-made play maybe won't be as accepted today or, or things that are very different and, and have this feeling of uh, speaking on eye level is is something that many youngsters come and want to watch and want to listen to. So I, I believe that now, I mean, I didn't learn, I, I, I wasn't even learning theater and drama at high school. It's something I started really on the last three years. I used to do street art, graffiti, um, working with text and technology and build stuff and put them on the street. And for me to being on stage is completely new and also to direct. But nowadays, because as you said, all the structure are changing, there is now new um, possibility to bring something outside the theater and put it on the theater. And uh, sometimes it, it works, sometimes not, but the... Pieces we, of this could work as street can, art as well, yeah, no? And we, we can street. do experiments. And for me, it's also experiment for me, much more than the audience, because the audience, some of them saw everything already, and some of them are much, have much more, are much more theater experience than, than I. And I have to say that I worked with people that are, have much more experience than me. And behind the scene, there's a lot of women involved in our, uh, the dramaturg, have you said the dramaturg? Dramaturg. Uh, it, she's the women, and the design, and the costumes, and actually it's only men on the stage <laughs> and only women behind. So um, most that, That's of going them, back to the old structure. <laughs> yeah. So um, all of them, uh, I mean, Shani, she was the dramaturg that uh, support me. Uh -huh. uh, working with her and with her experience, um, First, it's opened my mind, and it was le le theater lessons for someone who's a completely rookie. And so I, I really worked with her, and I brought, brought something, and, you know, smash it with her and play it with her. And uh, so I can say that um, without this experience, people, I, I don't know what would happen. But it's a great time to do now theater, because there's no rules anymore. And in what venue is it performing? In what, uh, on, a, on a normal stage? Or, uh, or in a... We do uh, perform on a normal stage. Because uh, I saw it on the video. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a normal stage. Uh, I really want to bring it, na still now we perform only in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, and I really want to bring it to most hidden parts in Israel and do some changes. And I designed, I'm the, also the, the designer of the uh, stage design, of because I'm industrial designer. Yes, you're an industrial so, um, designer. So I designed the whole thing to, that I can pack it on my car. So there's no problem to drive I anywhere. do that as well when I create my shows. But that's because I don't want to depend on any man that will have to pick up my scenery. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Uh, I, I designed everything, not more than... It's all uh, uh, reassembled to uh, little parts, and nothing is more than 30 kilos, so I can uh, take it by myself. Everything less than 30 kilos. But all in all, it's uh, 2,500 kilos. Uh, uh, 200, 200, 200, 500. Two and a half. Two, 250, kilos. 250 kilos. Yeah. Okay. All in all. 25 or 250? Uh, 250 kilos. 250. Oh. Okay. okay. But so it has reassembled to <laughs> small parts. Yes, yes. Mine is about <laughs> two and a half kilo. Ah, okay. It's <laughs> okay. fine. Okay. Thank you very much, Oren Elam. And uh, if you really want to see something completely different, it's, uh, I greatly recommend this. 
Um, and thank you all to the spectators, all those who are still here with us, with your coffee, with your tea, with your digital selves and with your physical selves. We are at the Isra Drama. I would like to thank Oren Elam and Michal Svironi and Aya Kaplan and Shirili Deshe and um, Nogash Genazi and Hisham Suleiman um, for being with us today and their plays from the Camry Theatre, the Khan Theatre and um, independent theatres around. So thank you very much and enjoy the plays. <laughs>